A new study points to a type of rock on the San Andreas Fault that may signal where the big one could hit. And it's here in Southern California. The rock was found near the Salton Sea where small seismic activity has been recorded. A powerful earthquake swarm is rocking California at a spot that is really sparking fears of the big one, the big earthquake, the big rupture that many scientists say California is overdue. And it's rumbling, especially in that area where scientists say the San Andreas Fault is locked and loaded in that area. They don't expect it doesn't have to happen at the whole fault. The whole San Andreas Fault is rupturing at once. There are certain areas that have different likelihoods of erupting. And in Southern California, it is locked and loaded. And now we have that ongoing earthquake swarm at the Salton Sea that is right there. So fears of the big one are justified. This is happening near the San Andreas Fault. This could unleash the infamous big one and decimate the California West Coast. The U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS, has said that many earthquakes have struck and are still striking the area around the Salton Sea starting Thursday night already and then continuing Friday morning and into the weekend. The Salton Sea, a lake, the lake is only roughly 100 miles away from San Diego. If you're interested, what could destroy San Diego? I couldn't believe it. I've lived there for a while. Is the Rose Canyon Fault, which was believed to be over and out, dormant, non-active, could unleash at least a 6.9 and destroy San Diego because San Diego is not prepared for a major earthquake. And this runs right underneath the city. So could tension from these earthquakes, they're shaking the areas. Could that trigger another fault line? Well, it's possible. Scientists are saying for the San Andreas Fault, while that long fault line along the west coast of California, basically from San Diego until beyond San Francisco, there's many other faults parallel to it or vertical towards it. And these smaller faults, if they rumble, they could also trigger the big one. Scientists are telling the Californians the big one is inevitable. It's just a question, when is it coming? So could that string of new earthquakes trigger or could they signal an approaching mega earthquake that they often call the big one? Yes, they could. The largest so far is a 4.3. We just had another 2.5 in this area. The Salton Sea lies at the southern end of the San Andreas Fault that area that unfortunately is problematic and it's one of the more significant seismic areas of California for that reason. Of course the reason is no stranger to earthquake swarm. We had similar activity in 2021. There was even a magnitude 5.3 that has rattled the area. In 2020 we had a 4.9 um, that struck near Westmoreland the zone is called the Brawley Seismic Zone and it is prone to clusters like this. They think that not the San Andreas Fault itself, but a neighboring fault caused West Moorland Fault is likely responsible for that activity. So this salt and sea seismic activity has drawn attention right now because something is a little different than normal. It's the frequency, but of course, as always, the proximity to the big one, the San Andreas Fault, that hasn't ruptured significantly for quite a while. And experts are warning that the Southern San Andreas Fault is ready, locked and loaded for a potential magnitude 7.8 or even greater earthquake, which could cause damage all across Southern California. And a 2015 study from the University of California Earthquake Center has estimated that a 75% chance of a magnitude seven quake striking the region by 2045 is present. That's that's not much time left. That's a high percentage. 
What? San Diego State University experts are saying, they say, quote, we cannot predict earthquakes, of course, but geologically, we're overdue for a major event near the Salton Sea. And the Salton Sea is shrinking. It's losing water. And that's very interesting because recent research suggests that that shrinking of the Salton Sea may be actually delaying a major quake. As the lake formed in 1905 by a breach of the Colorado River, it sometimes dries up due to drought and reduced runoff. And the reduced water weight is easing the stress on the San Andreas Fault. Not like with volcanoes, where if we have glaciers on top of stratovolcanoes that keep the lid on, if the weight of the glaciers is lost, and that's what the scientists actually saying right now, we will see many volcanoes erupt that are losing their glaciers. But here, taking the weight of the San Andreas Fault is helping the residents to delay the earthquake. The longer they have, the more time they have to prepare. It's just in 2023, the San Diego State University and UC San Diego together um, and the Institute of Oceanography, they found that when a basin that's filled with water, historically, it has increased seismic activity because it's lubricating the faults. So there's water, getting down there and it's it's like a lubricant the geological society of america says that the dermid ladder structure could be ground zero for the big one this rock stretches 15 miles near the surface of the fault temblers in this area could have severe consequences it could trigger or influence or encourage other associated faults to also move and um, what we're really afraid of is a, a big one, you know, a magnitude uh, 8 earthquake in Southern California. The U.S. Geological Survey says that despite small seismic activity, the area has been quiet for a while. This makes it overdue for a large earthquake. So the, the, the current dying trend of the Salton Sea may be actually be stabilizing the fault. But here's the thing. And maybe this is 50-50 now. Some other scientists say, well, it, but it could also mean the opposite. We really don't know. This is just a guess. It could also mean greater stress accumulation for a future rupture. Because if the lubricant goes away, also the smaller, maybe stress-releasing movements, they die also with the water moving away so that it's locked and greater stress is building up. So since there are so many smaller faults in that region, and since we have the fact that the San Andreas Fault is overdue, the USGS has released a statement that the scientists are really rushing to continue to study the interactions with the surrounding faults with the San Andreas Fault. Because they say that even faults that are buried beneath the Salton Sea could offer critical insights into the region's seismic history and then from there to future risks. So the findings from that research could play a key role in maybe refining predictions of seismic activity and maybe improving preparedness strategies for communi communities that live along the San Andreas Fault, and that's major cities. Because it could be that normal fault movements beneath the Salton Sea from these smaller faults are linked to past ruptures of the San Andreas Fault. So that, if they can have a closer look at that, maybe they find some cycles, rupture patterns in this region. And I'm sure they will be using AI that makes it way faster and more precise and they can analyze more data. They also need to find out how does the stress transfer between these faults? What is a key finding that they have already learned and that is very, very interesting, the direction. Should the San Andreas Fault rupture, the direction plays a role in triggering the other faults, the normal faults. So they have done some models and they suggest that if the San Andreas Fault 
breaks north to south. It is more likely to cause vertical displacement on all these other faults than if it ruptures the opposite direction, but it looks like it will rupture south to north. What is locked and loaded right now is a 15 mile stretch of the San Andreas Fault. This could be ground zero for the big one. There's a study that has been conducted and it says exactly that. Because they have found a certain type of rock that's in the San Andreas Fault and that kind of rock may give signals where the big one could hit and these signals point towards Southern California in the Salton Sea area because the rock was found near the Salton Sea where we see small seismicity right now up to 4.3, that's not that small anymore. So the Geological Society of America has said Dermid ladder structure in this area could be ground zero for the big one. That kind of rock stretches 15 miles near the surface of the San Andreas Fault. And earthquakes in this area, tremblers, could have severe implications, guys. It could trigger or influence or encourage other associated faults also to move, to create earthquakes and to trigger. And what the scientists are saying, quote, what we're really afraid of is the big one, a magnitude 7.9, magnitude 8, or even greater earthquake in Southern California. The USGS Geological Survey has said that despite the small seismic activity, the area has been quiet for a while in terms of something bad. And that's how they conclude it's absolutely overdue for the big one. So guys, we have to watch this. We have to see what's going on. Mysterious earthquakes on the Tokara Islands in Japan with daily new developments. Check out the video in the end screen. Crazy things underneath Mount Rainier in Washington, a stratovolcano, one of the three most dangerous volcanoes in the US. Probably the most dangerous because it's the most densely populated one. And it can live to this threat every minute without a volcanic eruption. It doesn't need to erupt to do destruction of devastating forces to the surrounding large communities. Check out the video in the end screen, guys. Stay safe. Check out the links if you want to support the channel. Buy me a coffee on my buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. Leave me a message. I'll answer with a 30 second video message. We can chat. Click the join button to become a supporting member for private stuff for behind the scene videos. Thank you for your supers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for subscribing. Welcome to all the new ones here. I appreciate having you all. See you soon. Click here.